We're back here streaming coverage of the semi uh, quarterfinals of the Bullet Knockout. Mr. Adib Arkadan against Mr. Eli Asmar. A very strong matchup, actually. Um, these players are very underrated currently. Um, um, Adib has reached 2600 blitz, and uh, Eli Asmar has reached 2450 or something like that. And they're both also very high rated in bullet as well. Um, actually, Adib has reached 2700 in bullet. <laughs> so yeah, currently their blitz ratings are very, very far off from their peak ratings due to several factors, of course. But yeah, you're going to see their play. What's up, Bayloof? Hey, so happy to see you here, man. And we've forgotten to change the title. <laughs> Uh, maybe I can give you edit permissions from my phone. <laughs> or can you actually change it without being... Ah, you can do it. Ah, right. You can do it be from uh, Nightbot. Yes. All right. So, um, the new title just put their names. Same as the last title, but just switch their usernames and their current ratings or... Yeah. Okay, Adib seems to have lost connection that's very unfortunate uh, okay okay yeah. adib is off line adib is off line unfortunately we don't have a hard rule for disconnects My stream is lagging a bit, and by a bit I mean a lot, so I'm having internet issues as well. Hmm. <laughs> okay, it seems to be stabilizing, though not quite. I'm losing a lot of... Packets. <laughs> Why is this? Okay, it seems to be better now. Picking up, picking up. Okay, it seems to be stable, I guess. No? No, my connection is bad as well. And we're waiting for Adib. He lost connection. <laughs> That's a good question, uh, Beiluf. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Rafael won't be having internet issues, that's for sure. <laughs> mm, okay, Adib seems to be back. And I seem to have okay quality now. Hopefully. Okay, so we're taking a look at this Benoni-like pawn structure. Adib is back, and he seems unfazed, <laughs> he seems completely unfazed, okay, so to be honest, if I keep losing this much, yeah, I mean, my internet isn't great, to be honest, let me know, Beiluf, if it's, if it's man manageable, Okay, so no uh, fixed pawn structure there in the center, and instead we have this position, which is quite difficult to assess. Um, yeah, I mean it seems it it seems better for white due to the space advantage, the C and uh, E pawns. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Beiluf. Beiluf is saying Adib wants to start with the bullet. <laughs> He's in a rush to start with the bullet. So just wants to <laughs> get rid of the blitz as fast as possible. 
Yeah, I mean, definitely a Deben Bullet is 2700. Now, it's not in 1 plus 1, but 2700. <laughs> Actually, 2700 plus, like, maybe 2760. I don't know what his highest is, but really high. <laughs> so, let's see. Let's see what he's going to do here. Stream is fine. Excellent, excellent. Okay. That brings joy to my heart. Yeah, it, it has improved. Definitely, okay. That's good. All right, so this position, I mean, white has a space advantage, sort of, <laughs> but black's deep on is annoying, and and yeah, it's difficult to foresee how white is going to pick it up. At knight d7, knight c5 is coming. He plays b4, a very dangerous idea. The point is to prevent knight c5, but now en passant, of course, and knight takes b3. You're still preventing knight c5, but that knight on b3 doesn't make for a great impression. Having said that, the knight on d7 now looks quite useless as well. Could black maybe consider playing knight c5 anyway? So that takes takes, and yeah, you have a bad pawn structure, but it ends there, I guess. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Okay, he plays c5 instead. The point is knight b6, I imagine. Now, how does white develop? Maybe white just tries to rush through with the a-pawn, like bishop d2 now. Okay, the queen is attacking the e1 rook, so bishop d2, natural developing move. And now a4, a5, and... Though after, you can't really push a6, so it's not so easy. At the same time, though, it's not clear how black is going to improve their position either. He goes knight a5, putting pressure on the b7 bishop. And yeah, asking important questions like, why did the bishop develop to b7, right? So now it's, okay, he's going to maybe put pressure with rook b1. Okay, he takes first. Yeah, I mean... Maybe then bishop a8 was available, so he wanted to take to get rid of that possibility. And now rook a b1, trying to trade off the rooks. And he, he immediately trades off the second pair. Now he... okay. I'm a bit surprised, like maybe a4 first was better. Just keep one pair of rooks on the board. I think that would favor white, no? Yeah, okay. Having said that, the queen now has the b7 square to work with, but it's very dangerous to play queen b7 because uh, black's pieces will become quite active on the king side. So, yeah, and Adib with this time, okay, he's just losing a pawn, takes, takes, and takes on f4. What? And then knight e5 is coming. Okay, that's a blunder under time pressure. Thank you, Bailouf. I'm sorry you had to change the title on your own there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just a blunder. And now knight e5 is very annoying. And your drop and d3 is coming and you drop c4. Pushes! Is this working? How did he calculate this in so little time? I mean, it does look like the knight is too far off. The knight is really bad at stopping fast pawns. Okay, then this knight e5 lo move looks silly. <laughs> it, it looks like a waste of a tempo. That's a crazy idea by Adib in time pressure. Man, man. Dropping frames, oh shoot. No, actually it's alright. Really, Beilou? Actually, it's the best it's been. <laughs> Might be on your end, I'm not sure. Or maybe I dropped some frames, but I mean, it's nowhere near what it used to be. It's actually quite good this time around. Okay, so 95 seems to have been a waste of a tempo. And the Deep is insistent on getting that pawn through. Bishop b6, a7 is coming. 
Wow. <laughs> Is this actually winning for white? That's insane. I mean, come on. What? Hi. Dr. 1000 IQ, what's up? Man, this is inexplicable. I understand nothing about chess. <laughs> nothing. What? What is this? This is crazy. What? Oh, this is astounding. What a display by Adib. Did he foresee all of this? I have no idea. I... That now, I mean, it's impossible though that black didn't have any other defense. I mean, come on, black must have had a defense there. But, like, that A pawn. Crazy. Now he's just up a piece, and. Yeah. Okay, time pressure though. And stopping the natural moves here. And the pawn is going to promote. Wow! <laughs> what a display by Adib. I have no words. I have no words, okay. Bishop d7. Ah, that, that's a mouse slip. <laughs> you saw Adib on cam there. See, that's why having the camera is important. He was like, ah, oh, shock, it's a mouse slip. Okay. So how is he going to recover from this? Actually, it's not so bad, to be honest. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Rafael is going for this London-esque London system. And yeah, this is very enterprising play by Adib. Bishop f5, knight h7 now. Yep. And this is like a reversed King's Indian. King's Indian attack. Knight h7, knight g5. And Adib gets up. Adib gets up. He's he's spoken his word. Okay, and now we're seeing Adib's chair. <laughs> he might be fixing the camera. Okay, he's back. And Eli wasn't able to <laughs> come up with any move here to make use of the time uh, that Adib could have wasted when he was fixing his. Uh, his chair there. Okay, the knight goes back to b8. Now, this might look like a very strange move, but it's going to reroute to d7. So, very, very nice idea there by Adib. To be honest, though, I would have started with knight h7. Okay. This is... Isn't this just losing a pawn? Okay, I mean, he could have taken with the rook. Ah, b7 is hanging. Okay, what am I talking about? Shut up, man. <laughs> there is bishop... Okay, no, d4. Ah, uh... uh, this is... Okay. Um, if e4 takes... Bishop takes d4 is not available because you can take with that knight. Okay, so let me show you what I'm calculating. So this... I was thinking maybe takes with the intention being if takes you have like something like bishop. I mean if takes with the bishop. Okay, so e4 takes and bishop takes, bishop takes, and you pick up this knight. So actually he can take with this knight, and even better is just taking with this knight. So he goes c6, and I'm surprised he didn't go for e4. He goes rook e1 first, okay. That's interesting. I mean, this is the best uh, stream I've had in terms of quality because of the time. Usually in my streams are uh, for these matches, everyone agrees at like 9 p.m. And this is absolutely the worst time for streaming. Now it's way better. 8, 8 to 9 p.m. is terrible, actually. Now I'm like, okay, I had a rough start at the beginning of the stream, but now... Smooth sailing, I hope. Okay, so Adib seems to have stabilized here, which doesn't look like it. Like, e4 looked very menacing. Um, Actually, now isn't he just dropping a pawn? Question mark? 
now if no if for the queen is you know under attack okay he's not dropping the pawn kind of feel there's some tactic here knight b5 yeah knight c7 is coming okay but knight c7 okay you go knight a6 now but knight d6 knight d6 attacking b7 rook e7 and there's nothing there okay I mean, definitely black has been outplayed here. I don't really like black's position. Having said that... Yeah, Beluf, and what happened there? Was it in the same structure? He blundered in five moves. <laughs> okay. So Beluf is saying he played the league game against it. 2075 rated player who blundered in five moves. Okay, this seems to be working for a dude. Very sus though. Maybe just a4 here, queen d7, and yeah, white should have some kind of advantage. Uh, was it a classical game, Beluf? Yeah, I feel I feel that he should have some kind of advantage here after queen d7 and the bishop goes back. Yeah, completely unrelated. Ah, okay, yeah. So it's a league where you play like one game a day on weekends or something like that. Classical. Or a rapid league. Okay, knight e4, yeah, there is the potential for a lot of peace trades to occur. And black seems to be riding the ship here. There is rook c7 though. No, rook c7 doesn't work, there is knight takes d2. So, so rook c7 attacking the queen, there is knight takes d2, we're an attack here. Though that's not the end though, after queen d1, but... Okay, anyway, he's going to take, allowing this. Wait, isn't this just losing a piece? You have to go back to d1. Actually, there is knight c4 as well. Spinning, but there's no nothing for white. I was afraid of taking, and let's say the queen moves here. Then you can take, and after takes, you can take here. Adib is considering taking here first, I guess. Which makes sense. <laughs> okay, Beluf. <laughs> so Beluf was playing poker while he was playing chess. He was pretending to think on move one, and when he played queen takes d4, he pretended to struggle with annotations like a beginner. Okay, so knight c4 now or queen d1? Those are, I think, the only two moves that save material here. Otherwise, there's bishop takes e5 and queen takes d2. Yeah, we, we'll put that up, I guess, Beiluf, maybe in the break. Ah, queen b2, of, of course, or queen c2. Like any move, and like, yeah, just any move that protects the knight. Okay. Now, who's emerged better here? Hmm. I kind of feel... Actually, a4 is hanging. <laughs> but then, yeah, knight takes e4. You have to protect the, the spawn. Because then, boom, balalum. Very bad on the dark squares. Yeah, these dark squared weaknesses might come to haunt black, so... First you have to stabilize and maybe try to hunt the spawn. And if you're able to pick it up, then it's a very different story. Bishop c6 might be an idea. Yeah, I mean, this is very concrete. If black is able to pick up something, then they're fine. Or even better. Actually, now you can even go pawn hunting and play queen takes a4. No real reason not to. Let's see if that's what's going to be played. Mm. 
Yeah, okay. Queen d4, further attacking e4, insisting on taking that pawn. And yeah, you have nothing better than queen e6, and if takes, takes. Yeah, queen e6, takes on e4, bishop takes e4, queen takes e4, queen takes d4. And that endgame should be better for white, in fact. Yeah, maybe right about equal because I'm calculating an iron. Anyway, we'll see this on the board. I don't think there's any other move here. He go yeah, I mean, this will transpose. Actually, not really transpose. He's trying to keep the queens on the board. That's clever, because now if knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, the queen is forced to take on e4, and black is able to keep the queens on the board. That should help black. That should help black. Because that rook endgame I was calculating, actually I saw some potential for a draw there for black, but yeah, it wasn't looking nice. So let's see. Both sides under very severe time pressure. 5 plus 1. We're only 2 games in. By the way, are the cams frozen? The cams are frozen, guys. You didn't tell me. Oh my god. Actually, no, they're not frozen. <laughs> Both players are frozen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they seem to be blinking. <laughs> Lol. Okay, what happened here? Oh, he took an a4. Uh huh. Black looks very active here. I mean, white looks very active. Trying to liquidate. And he liquidates. Okay, this is just a draw now. I think good for Eli to draw after losing. As Beiluf once said, the Soviet school of chess. <laughs> I can see Raphael smack his lips. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. I, it should be a draw, but yeah, Raphael is going to lose. Wow. Adib really pushing it here. He has to take a decision. <laughs> F3. Uh huh. And the pawn is almost. And he flags. Not boding well for Raphael and the bullet. Okay. Not drawing that is. Uh, not that it's bad or anything, but I mean, it's bad psychologically for uh, Raphael. Not drawing these kinds of positions happens a lot, actually. More than you'd imagine among the strong players. Like you see Magnus against uh, Magnus against uh, I don't know Fabiano and Blitz and Fabiano wouldn't be able to draw. I mean, ugh, why did I use the Fabiano example? Because <laughs> I'm one who doesn't really believe that Fabiano is like yeah I know. Uh, like you know there are these kinds of chess beliefs among people or stereotypes maybe that Fabiano is bad at blitz, Giri draws a lot, both aren't so correct and you start doing some confirmation bias to prove that they are correct so eh. anyway back to the chess here very interesting opening chosen by Mr. Adib he definitely has quite a big advantage here with the space advantage his knights being on c3 and d4 Access to some very nice squares. Now the knight can come to e5, black's knight, and that would mean that black isn't doing so badly. And the bishop on g6 is doing a nice job in preventing uh, any rook b1. So now, so now uh, Adib takes care of that and plays bishop d3, so that rook b1 followed by b4 would be possible. So this would be, I guess, white's main plan in this position. Okay, takes on g6. And now is rook b1 going to come? You could imagine so. 
not Wesley so ah that joke hurt <laughs> okay um knight b5 knight c b5 as well hmm putting pressure putting pressure on the d6 c7 squares so that's potentially annoying Okay, g5, pushing forward with the pawn here. I, I don't understand the sequence. Okay, the queen comes to c2. This I understand, connecting the rooks. And keeping an eye on the e4 square, maybe, in case the knight wants to, the black knight wants to make use of that. g6. Okay. I mean, he's using his second pawn to cover g6, but I mean, the g5 pawn... Looks a bit weak. I guess there is enough control over it. And you always have like knight h7 to protect it. So that won't be a big issue, I guess. Okay, the knight finally comes to e5. It's natural square. I'm afraid my internet might drop. So just making sure that won't happen. Seems to be picking up again, I hope. Yeah. Okay, dropped some frames there, but seems to be okay now. Anyway, back to this. Yeah, actually, maybe I need to switch connections by the bullet. We'll see. Anyway, so queen c3 here. And the knight is trapped, what? What? The knight is trapped? Am I missing something here? <laughs> like I guess you have some knight d6 And just knight d6, I mean there's no rook takes e5 or anything, I mean the queen is still protecting <laughs> I don't quite understand what is this? Yeah, queen c3 just took away the only square the knight had. I didn't really like knight cb5. I understood it attacks those squares, but felt strange. I think he had to play rook b1, b4. Now, I understand you open up for the a rook, black's a rook, but I didn't find any other plan for white, to be honest. Okay, and him spending time after so... Uh, Spending so much time after this move indicates that this wasn't at all planned. <laughs> Let's see. He sacks an entire rook. Well, in exchange. And yeah, this actually makes sense. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Huh. So as you pick up e5 now, I guess. You do, ah, there's a very, knight takes e5, knight e4, queen b2, rook takes e5, queen takes e5, queen takes f2, or knight takes f2, knight takes f2. What about that line? Can anyone in the chat, chat help me out? Knight takes f2, king f1, I guess. Yeah, I guess that works for white. Mm. 
might be free just like queen e3 yeah um, he's definitely cal calculating this he goes knight e4 yeah, just one second guys now yeah anyway so queen b2 i guess rook takes e5 isn't sufficient yeah if i had spending a lot of time he does it Yeah, queen takes f2 and like queen e3 maybe. Huh, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's dropping something here. But queen b2 back, hold on. Queen b2 back. Knight f2, king g1. There's no mate. No smothered mate there. So. I mean, yeah, black isn't... Okay, old queen d4, yes, same idea as queen b2, but more forcing. Maybe... Like, is there some queen takes b3 at the right time? I don't think so. Okay, maybe queen f4 now or something? I mean, black isn't losing. Whoa, he cut it really short. Is he going to go for a draw? Actually, king of one, where's the draw? <laughs> black looks worse here. Yeah. But rook e8, rook e8. It's actually still not easy. I mean, this is a very good decision by Adib to try to win, but... It actually gives uh, gives Rafael a hook to survive here because now the moves are much easier. You just have to play rook e2, queen g4 check, g4, g3, these kinds of ideas. These are simple. While for white, there is not a very simple move here. Those knights and the flags. Okay. I mean, yeah, a second. He, very, very slow reaction times, to be honest, by Lee here. I shouldn't have flagged that but yeah okay he's tired today and playing the mora gambit and this line of the mora i've played this a lot against the deep actually yeah let's see what rafael has in store here h3 i i get the point preventing bishop g4 but is this theory Aha, and he's going for real aggression here. Sacrificing two pawns. Now, sacrificing two pawns is never good in the Mora. But in this Mora-like position, it's... I'm not seeing how bad it is. It's maybe not that bad. Huh. Interesting. Knight f4, very principled. Trying to get rid of at least one dark square, uh, one bishop. Forcing bishop takes f4. Otherwise, if the bishop moves, then you trade queens. Oh. Ah. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Wow. Just picking up an exchange. Picking up an exchange. Oof. Okay, like bishop takes is forced. Bishop takes d6 and yeah, bishop takes d6 promotes the queen. And where do you get the bishop? Where do you put the bishop now? 
maybe if just to G3 or something. That's very clever by Adib. I love it. I love it. Okay, Queen E2. Queen E2 might be possible. Queen E2 actually protecting the A pawn. Yeah. Yeah, I like Queen E2. I'm not seeing anything wrong with Queen E2. Is there some tactic I'm missing? I don't think so. Rook E1 also. Same idea. I'm guessing Queen takes A2 is very dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, actually the attack isn't over. I mean, what Adib did is very clever from a material point of view. But the attack rages on. The attack rages on. And some people who play the Mora Gambit might like this as well. But it's two pawns and an, and an exchange. Come on. This shouldn't be any good. Nah, this is too much. Let's see. Let's see. Rook E1. Hmm. Yeah. What's Adib going to play here? E6. Very natural move. Not minding bishop takes f8. Yeah. That only helps. That only helps black, I feel. Take it with the rook, though. Hmm. Not even considering at least taking with the king. Can white go pawn hunting here and play bishop takes h7? <laughs> uh, arguing that g6 is way too dangerous trying to trap the bishop. Well, actually, g6 might not be enough. I mean, it might be enough for black to trap the bishop. Yeah, I don't know. Queen a4. Yeah, I mean, of course, bishop takes h7 is just too much. Anyway, you're down way too much material. You need to checkmate black or it's not going to end well. And seeing that the king didn't take on f8, that should be a good sign. I mean, at the same time, after king takes f8, the king going to g8, it's still not so safe, so... So taking with the rook makes sense from that point of view in, 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 the, in the sense that both are still uh, kind of bad for white, yeah, for black, in terms of king safety, not in terms of the material or uh, positional uh, evaluation. So black here is of course winning, but in terms of king safety, they're still doing badly. Once they fix that issue, they'll be easy, easily on the way to victory, and now maybe... Maybe queen d4, trying to get rid of the pieces. Yeah, queen d4 looks good. Because after queen b5, for example, there's there's a6, I believe. And once the pin is... Actually, no, a6 would not work because of knight takes c6. Okay, so let me show you guys that line. So I was calculated this, and if this, okay, goes a different direction. So that wouldn't work. There is this at the end though. Might still be working, but then this, okay, no need to calculate this. So queen b4. Ah, attacking the rook as well. Mm. Okay, but then queen d1. Queen d1 is the only move, I guess. Queen d1 is the only move. Yeah, I mean, you don't want black to trade off the knights. That would be 
a step in the right direction for black to trade off more, piece, more pieces and make their material advantage more pronounced. Alright, what else if not queen d1? I don't know what he's considering. Maybe he doesn't see that the one rook is hanging. No, of course not. I mean, ugh. I don't know, is there something else? I do not know. You either play queen takes before or what? I don't get it. The queen is hanging, the rook is hanging. You either play queen d1 or queen takes before. And you're not going to play queen takes before. <laughs> wow. He's spending a lot of time here. Honestly, downright shocking. Am I missing something? <laughs> and the div is off camera. What am I missing? He plays queen d1. Okay, I mean he should have played that two minutes ago. What was he thinking about? Maybe psychologically, I mean, I don't know. Okay. I mean, black can just take on e5 and play bishop d7 and just develop like that. And the, yeah, with one more piece traded, the position should be quite easy. So let's see. So knight takes e5, rook takes e5, bishop d7 now. Preventing any bishop b5 ideas or rook b5 ideas. And yeah, bring your rook to d8 now or bishop to c6. Maybe bishop c6 first to pre... Not prevent, but at least dissuade black from playing any rook e4 ideas. Okay, Adib. That's not fixing something. Okay. So bishop c6 first I prefer rather than playing rook d8 first. Though probably not much of a difference. Alright, both sides under some severe time pressure. <laughs> What's going on here? Come on Adib, make a move. Whoa. Long castles? <laughs> what? Ah, that's unnecessary, no? I would be very happy as white to see long castles. I mean, yeah, it's not... Mm, uh, mm. It's definitely not like dangerous or anything. Okay, Raphael, please don't flag. And now F6, isn't that winning something? Yeah. Yeah, I blamed it. And he flags. Yeah, the problem is for Raphael, like when he gets surprised by something in that time scramble, or like he doesn't see something clear, he just flags. So this isn't boding well at all for the bullet. This is looking very bad for Raphael and the bullet if he keeps this uh, up. Okay, 4 0. I mean, Adib is definitely um, coming in as the stronger player here. Um, with his ratings, but 4-0 against Rafael is insane, to say the least. Okay. Let's see, 3. Yeah, just the normal Scandinavian and Finketowing against the Queen D8 Scandi. Now you see this more often against the Queen D6 Scandi. Because you get this Bishop to a 4 idea. But against the Queen D8 Scandi, he plays the Bishop for a 4 idea anyway. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely playable for White. But like, I mean, definitely not the best way to get an advantage against the Scandinavian. The best way is one of those 95 ideas. Bailuf knows what I'm talking about if you're still in the chat there. <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe a four or five now. That's why he played bishop e3, a four or five. Oh. Oh no. Actually, wait, did I? Ah. I'm sorry, guys. I used to have the numbers here. Now they're back. I pretend to know, yeah. <laughs> okay, so b3, I guess, to prevent knight c4 and make that b6 knight look silly. Mm, yeah, why not b3? I mean, b3 weakens some squares. There's bishop a3, bishop b2 sometimes. That's why Adib was taking his time, but... And he goes knight e2, because after, yeah... Because after rook a c1, there's bishop a3, and you'd have to lose the c pawn. So he had to see this knight e2 idea. Okay, very, very accurate by Mr. Adib. And now bishop a3 comes with no threat, and a 4 of 5 is still in the air. A 4 of 5 anyway, no? Or maybe a4 to prevent any bishop a3 ideas. a4 is also interesting. Because then you maybe have a5 as a follow-up. And even a6. Keep on pushing through on the queen, uh, queen side. There I go. Getting it right for the first time. <laughs> Not mixing up queen side for king side like I always do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I like a4 to be honest, even though like it's positionally questionable weakening so many squares, but I like preventing bishop a3. Rook e1, yeah, it's, it feels like, a deep, because the problem I have for white here is that there's no good way to improve the position, apart from honestly a4 and just, okay, bishop a4. Yeah, you need to play knight f4 at some point, but the problem is c3 is dropping. So you need to play something to distract this queenside operation there, the queen on c7 and rook on c8, to try to get something there. c4 may... ah! And now with c4, c5, yeah. It's over actually, <laughs> for white. And for... see, I messed up again. For black, yeah. Actually, it's not so simple, because after knight d7, b4 now, there's e5. Maybe Adib was too quick to play the c5 move, because he didn't have to. The queen was still... Now e5. By the way, a4, b5 would trap the queen. He goes b6, not e5. Okay, why not e5 there? I thought e5 made a lot of sense. Because the bishop on f7 is protecting those squares. Yeah, now e5, no? Am I missing something? Okay, now e5, yeah, I guess you can take and... Oh, actually, I don't think that works. Eh, I don't know, I, I thought e5 even there was working. Okay, white has to at least do something, like bishop g3 at least, to discourage e5. That would really discourage e5. And both sides not caring about e5. It's the most principled pawn break in this position. And the only pawn break for black, so... Why is that not being played? Well, I, I guess, like, technically not the only, but you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so why is bishop g3 not being played and why is e5 previously not being played? As gods, no clue. Okay, Adib really low on time now. Well, not really low on time, but quite low on time. Which is something rare we've seen in this match. Apart from the first game where he lost connection. Rook c1. I'm not getting these moves. Not getting these moves. What's the problem with e5 now? I mean, I guess there's takes. 
takes and knight takes d5 and if you take on a four there's knight e7 check but that's three pieces for the queen you guys do you guys know what like okay e5 you take i take back you take with the knight okay hold on e5 takes takes knight takes takes on a four knight e7 check bishop e7 or rook e7 doesn't matter i guess maybe rook e7 and you take on c6 rook takes c6 but you've lost three pieces for that queen so i don't know yeah i don't quite get it but okay Okay, still a very complex battle. We might, yeah, we'll have enough time for another 5 plus 1 game. So what should white play here though? I don't really get, I mean, he's trying to get c6 to work, I guess, but I feel it's kind of premature here. He goes c6. Hmm. Knight b6 is basically the only idea. And there might be some knight takes d5 ideas at the right time, but no, they don't work. Um, knight takes d5 intending a discovery on the queen and like following up with a knight check. You know, that familiar pattern of this in the Sicilian. Okay, but no, not knight takes d5 after knight b6. Is there anything else apart from knight b6? Apparently there is. Point is after, yeah, after you take on d7, then the rook, so that it's not attacked by the pawn on d7, would capture here. And it would be sufficiently protected in that line. Alright, creative idea creative definitely c7 wow i think it works <laughs> throwing a spanner in the works if bishop takes c3 you take on Actually, if bishop takes c3, queen takes c3. Yeah, yeah. If bishop takes c3, queen takes c3. Or rook, yeah, even rook c3. Okay, goes for this line. Yeah. So he's lost in exchange. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, White is just up in exchange here. But he's really low on time, and Black has the bishop pair and the pawn. So maybe not that easy to convert. And there's some annoying presence on the C file. So goes here. Maybe Rook B8, because after A3 you have Bishop D6. Could be an idea. He does it. d6 and queen a2 now dropping a3 bishop takes a3 why not right yeah yeah he's lost the thread a bit adib here he's lost two pawns for no reason okay but rook c8 yeah necessary probably now the pawn on a7 is attacked looking dangerous again <laughs> just when you think the tables have turned adib finds a way Maybe rook c4, so that after takes on, and he goes a different direction. Forcing the rooks off, very clever. e5 now, yes. 
a move that was screaming to be played ages ago. Maybe e4 now. This I don't like so much for uh, for black. I I prefer d4. Okay, queen e1 right in time to stop queen g3. Okay, queen f2 doesn't work. Queen f2 now does work. Adib is so precise. It's amazing. How is he not losing anything? <laughs> okay, finally. I mean, not finally. <sighs> what? Oof. Man, Adib is just insane. I mean, not finally. As uh, Yeah, I mean, finally. Because it's crazy. How is he not losing something? <laughs> and he still didn't. Now he, he might even win this game. This is... He just resigns. <laughs> this is... Man. Wow. Amazing play by Adib. I, like hanging on in that time scramble. How, how was he able to... So much stuff was hanging. Like in the end he did blunder but... He snapped it right back. Wow. Wow, wow. No, that, that's some skill. We're in for a very exciting uh, semi-final. I think if Maroon uh, beats Jawad, he's going to face Adib. And that's going to be a real test for Maroon. For game over, bro. Because Adib, if he keeps this form up... Wow. Just insane. Just insane. All right. All right, all right. So another type of Mora Gambit here. I don't think he blundered because he pinned the piece. When he lost, when yeah, like when when Rafael took on d4, you're saying Adib didn't blunder. I mean, honestly, I can't remember the position. <laughs> Maybe we'll take a look at it if we have if we have a second after the break. We'll also take a look at your game. You know. Anyway, this is a typical Mora position. Allowing takes on f6 and knight d5. No, Adib isn't playing this very well. It's still somehow... Of course, I'm more familiar with these positions from the white side. <laughs> Being a Mora Gambit player myself, but... Uh... Takes on f6, takes on f6, knight d4, king d8, takes knights. No clue actually. Maybe it's not so bad for black. Yeah. From what I know, bishop e3 is the better move for white in this position. It's actually what Asimhan recommends, at least. And yeah, I found it to be better. Anyway. So back to the game. Okay, so match clock is over. This will be the final 5 plus 1 game. Let's see how they get along here. Yeah, anyway. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. 
So what has a commanding position to be honest? Like you see these positions, black is up a pawn, but look at this kind of pressure white has. It's very annoying, this d5 squared. So ugly. And the deep feels compelled to go back to d8. That's not a good sign. It is not good. Okay, Adib holding his face in his hands, just calculating, I guess. Or it's really cold. <laughs> okay, finally this decision. Taking and now knight d5. And now he takes because knight d4 is the idea. Yeah. And now white has to see if they want to go for knight takes f6 check and try to ruin black spawn structure and then follow up with bishop d5 but there's knight e2 yeah yeah not easy so i was calculating the following line whoops what um knight takes f6 and if queen takes queen takes he takes. I was thinking maybe bishop d5, but that would blunder knight e2 check with a fork. So important there that black has that resource. So now black can consider bishop g5 winning an exchange. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I was going to say consider knight takes b3, but I immediately looked at the position position that spotted bishop g5, and he plays it right on cue. Yeah, just take on c1. You can take on b3 first, I guess, if you want to be extra cautious. But I don't think the move order even matters. Yeah, now you can't even play rook takes c1. Huh. Uh, let me tell them. Oops, I forgot to tell them. I should have told them a bit before. Okay, maybe they'll continue playing. They've agreed to withdraw. And they've started with the 3 plus 1, so let me start the clocks there. No. Or the clock, not clocks. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't take a break, so let's continue. Let's continue here. Yeah, I prefer that they not take a break, to be honest, because the internet won't be lasting for long. Seven zeros. Just insane. I think Eli also resigned. The, yeah, he, they didn't even agree to withdraw, he just resigned. <laughs> It's actually six zero. Yeah, it's it's actually six zero. Okay. Yeah, I mean he needs to get on the scoreboard. This is insane. That they playing so well. I mean just not leaving anything up to chance. Every time you see not see, you feel like Adib blundered, he didn't. <laughs> It's crazy, it's crazy. 
Okay. And in the smartness, I see cone. <laughs> yeah, there's just a rather symmetrical position. Uh, who to prefer here? Queen d5, bishop c4, queen c6, only move. Yeah, because queen c5 would blunder, bishop takes up 7 check. Yeah, Adib not doing any of these blunders today. Like, you'd think he'd drop at least one of these kinds of tactics here and there, but no. He is quite sharp. Yeah, I, I guess white... Like, I, I don't know even... Like, the e5 pawn is weaker than black's e4 pawn. Or actually, is it? There's bishop d5 coming. No, actually, white should be preferred now that I think about it. Bishop d5 is coming. Yeah, you have this. And maybe king h7. No, king h7 just drops a pawn for no reason. Ah, difficult. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's actually quite difficult to determine who's better in this position. At least for me. I think with the bishop on g4 controlling d1, though, like, maybe black is better. And a6 can't come at any moment for black to stop bishop b5. Even goes queen d6. Yeah, this is actually... And I feel like once you get rid of the slight squared bishop being on c4 with like a6, b5 maybe, or some other options, um, then, then it's quite annoying for black, uh, for white. There I go again. There I go again. Nice idea, bishop e6, but it's a bit of a concession. The point is that after bishop takes e6, there's queen takes e6 protecting the e7 pawn, but not protecting the a7 pawn, but I guess after queen g4, it's, it gets quite dangerous for black. But not too dangerous, eh, maybe there's rook d2. Okay, we might see that. Will Ali play queen takes a7? I was saying though, bishop e6 might be a bit of a concession because the bishop on g4 was doing so well. Okay, queen g4 now. Queen g4 is very natural. e6! Yeah, deep playing extra safe here. Extra safe. Uh, I don't like it though. I don't know. Adib has queen, uh, rook takes d1 and queen takes a2 <laughs> if he wants to be super greedy, but then a lot of pawns get played. Yeah, Adib is really trying to win this. Let's see. Let's see. C6. Oh. <laughs> Protects the pawn, but... Mm. Okay, I guess. Alright. Rook d7. Everything seems solid for now. Everything seems solid. Some, no, c5 isn't good. Rook takes d4 or rook d8. Ah, giving up the two rooks though. Queen takes d8 is a possibility now. Will Raphael go for it? I think he should. I think he should. Actually, it's not such an easy decision because then e5 would be really weak. He doesn't go for it. Okay. I think I would have tried to at least go for some kind of imbalance there. Now it's again available, but now you drop a2, so maybe less of a good option. If he does it now, it would signal something quite bad, to be honest. Like in terms of the psychological uh, um, position that Eli is in. Okay. Yeah, just trades and d5 
the e4 pawn is only light square, the central pawns are on dark squares, this endgame should favor black, and Eli being so low on time, uh, I mean, yeah, like Eli needs to try to speed up for the bullet, at least, I said bullet almost there, for the bullet, <laughs> b3 now but b5 yeah black has an edge definitely takes now and you have a majority on the king side and c5 is coming a5 intending a f oh he drops a pawn we've seen the first blunder by adib <laughs> Amazing. But he might still win. <laughs> oh, it's insane. How good is this guy? How good is he? He's way too good is the answer. He blunders again though. Not, no, not quite. I guess there was a pawn promotion there. Uh, but not now. Oh, and drops the bishop. Not quite. Okay. He'll escape with a draw. No. Okay, at least Eli is on the scoreboard here. Why did Eli drop g3? Yeah, I don't know, man. Both sides dropped something there. Ah, what a game. Though it's good, at least Eli didn't lose on time. So that's like, he should be happy about that psychologically and try to get back into the game. It shows that he has some potential. Um, to come back a bit on the bullet. Now, of course, I think this is a foregone conclusion, the match. There's no way he's coming back with that with so little time, but... At least try to save face a bit. <laughs> now, Bailouf. I mean, not much time is remaining in terms of the match anyway, like barely 30 minutes. A bit more than 30 minutes. 35. 36. Actually, a bit under 37. Actually, th yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, Bailouf, you're brutal. <laughs> Bailouf said he's gonna shower, BRB, get rid of all these blunders. <laughs> okay, Bailouf. Do whatever you feel uh, can help you in this situation. <laughs> Okay, so by the way, an interesting pawn gambit in the opening. I think it was the England for the Budapest. What was it? Let's go back. It was the England, yeah. And Adib did not take the second pawn. So he doesn't want to ref refute the, the England gambit, which he should try. <laughs> Live countdown. Beidouf bathtub stream one asks myself <laughs> no one in the chat said that just me yeah alright so um, knight d5 very natural okay actually Was, was knight takes e4 possible? Anyway, didn't happen. Now the bishop comes to f3 and... White has the bishop pair. And the pawn. I'm pretty sure c4 isn't the refutation of the... Or refutation of the England gambit, but it's a good move. Anyway, rook d1 now, if you want to be annoying, rook d1, rook d1, and then knight takes f6, and then e5, rook d1, rook d1, ah, maybe queen takes c4, but takes on f6, hmm, Yeah, rook d1. 
Ah, actually, e5 doesn't fork because there's knight takes d5. What am I talking about? Okay. He does play rook d1, but not for the reasons I'm mentioning. <laughs> Yeah, because e5 doesn't really work for multiple reasons, okay, but he does damage the pawn structure on the king side, and yeah, <laughs> not looking swell. Bishop h6, trying to go for nasties. <sighs> okay. Rook e8, rook f e8, and what's white going to do here? Rook d5, yeah, I, like I, it seems without the purpose. Like you're not going to play rook g5. I, I would have preferred um, something like b3 maybe, just to play queen d3, but that's also very slow. Yeah, white's problem here is that they don't have a very easy avenue to. To get their pieces active. So let's see here. To be honest, due to my internet situation, I'm hoping they can speed up this match. I think I might drop connection even before the bullet. So I need to switch connection. The problem is. The problem is if I do that, if I switch connections, I would have then two VODs to download and I can't upload on YouTube as quickly. These are honestly first world problems if you've ever heard <laughs> first world problems. Oh, and he's just getting mated. Bishop uh, g7 and gg. Okay, he had to sack the exchange there. E5 now. E5, game over. E5. E5. E5, man! No! Adib! Why not E5? Was I missing something? I don't know. E5 looked. E5 is still available. Not as good now, but still there. Ah, okay. Yeah, rook g3 just wins as well. Trapping the piece and Eli resigns. Alright. A complete massacre. Seven. Wait, they drew that normally. So it's seven and a half half. That's the correct score. So if Adib wins two more games, actually the Mercy Clause can be activated. Mercy Rule can be activated. So let's see. Okay. Yeah, anyway, okay, so this setup against the London system, a very principled setup by Black, just getting the bishop on c8, which is usually a bad bishop, getting it on a very strong, long diagonal, where it exerts pressure on White's king side, and Black has a very solid structure here, making use of a tactic with the c5 move, because the bishop on d, actually this is just a fork, whoa. Oh yeah, it is just, actually no it's not, ah it is, yeah there's a mate there, but wait, queen f, okay I thought this was some opening trick by Adib, but I guess it's not, I guess it's not, no, I believed him as well, <laughs> had I been in Elise's shoes, uh, I would have believed him. <laughs> It's very, very good that Eli hasn't resigned psychologically. Very commendable, actually. Just one second, guys.
All right, I guess I'm back here. I'm actually thinking of just switching connections now, to be honest. Okay, test, test, one, two, three. I guess we're back. Seems so. Okay, so should be good now. Yeah. Alright, sorry for that guys. So a deep still down upon here. Yeah, not much has changed. But his position to be honest has improved a bit. I mean, I felt it was too dangerous to continue streaming with my internet potentially dropping, so I had to switch to my other connection here. Yeah. Alright. Okay. So what? Ooh, whoa, this is complex. Ah. Adib wasn't losing there though. Adib wasn't losing. Adib had rook d8. Wow, he was able to escape that and yeah, big blunder. I mean, but finally, Eli is able to get a win in. So that hopefully will make the match more exciting. Ah, this line. Rafael knows what's up. I play this line as black. Knight d4 now. And you have to play d3 as white and sacrifice the pawn back. Otherwise, if you try to keep it, you're in a world of hurt. And the deep knows it. Very impressive. By both players, actually. Okay, takes. G2. You see how wide a repertoire Adib has, right? Like, he's, he seems to know every single opening. <laughs> okay. D4, E4, yes. That's the classic stuff as black in this line. And white pushing with F3, also classic. Trying to get... Uh, uh, rid of these powerful pawns, just get the simpler structure there. You see, take stakes. Yeah, so what's it going to be now? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm trying to get a hold of this position, trying to assess it here, evaluate it. Queen d3, normal. And maybe a3 now. Just to prevent knight b4, even though that's a bit weakening on the light squares there. But quite natural as well, bishop d2, rook a e8, yep, 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 all right, okay. <sighs> this game, I mean, for some reason seems to be a bit slower than the other games. 
it's gonna really isn't much here for both sides just this maneuvering type of game I guess knight f4 should be played maybe not too soon though maybe black would do well to take on c3 but then maybe b takes c3 is what he is afraid of and knight a4 denying the trade altogether and the knight goes back okay knight f4 yeah okay let's see what black is going what white is going to do here he finally decides to take on d5 even though i don't really like it trading too many pieces okay but bishop takes okay he wants that knight on e4 very sensible and the bishop pair shouldn't count for much in this position the knight on e4 will be a very very powerful piece and <laughs> piece and very annoying for black to deal with now rook f7 is forced easy decision there rook e2 intenting some rook c2 rook a c1 yeah rook c2 now he takes okay he feels that the knight is way too powerful but i don't like this decision the e3 pawn is going to be very tender in this position and the rook on f5 yeah okay should be two g5 the pieces are swarming maybe rook c1 though now intending rook c6 but then g4 g4 with the potential of a bishop takes e3 idea uh, rook takes e3 idea yeah rook c1 doesn't really work there and queen here what yeah why not queen d3 at least very strange decision yeah deep is getting sloppy ah rook takes f5 i missed that but maybe rook takes d2 or something or okay rook takes f5 rook takes f5 takes ah uh, okay king g2 trades queens yeah no reason not to i guess okay maybe queen e5 now no allowing queen e4 potentially very very tight on the clock Queen e4 might be annoying though. I don't know, man, man, maybe. But queen g5! Okay, Rafael took that time to not blunder something and he blundered something. I mean, okay. Okay, bishop falls, but there are a lot of checks now. And this, <laughs> this looks. This should be somehow winning for black. But maybe winning is a strong word. Ah! hurt I hate seeing blunders like that I mean like this one <laughs> sometimes I like seeing blunders but like this one especially with the way the match the game was progressing okay back to the Mora but the Mora with Queen takes d4 Actually, this is the one of the declined lines where you do play queen takes d4, right? Let me just check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one. Oops, I forgot to... <laughs> the ongoing game there and we're seeing this kind of pawn structure we 
which actually here uh, maybe takes now on e4 and then d5 d5 e4 there so takes on e4 now something something like this maybe might be an idea let's see let's see does take on e4 queen takes e4 he has to calculate bishop takes d6 of i mean c takes d6 of course yeah you can't take on f3 because takes on c7 you take on e2 and he promotes so you have to play bishop takes here and after bishop takes actually yeah maybe yeah maybe this isn't so great for black it's fine but yeah liquidating like this in the center that should promise black some advantage with the ruined pawn structure i guess hmm Okay, now there is the intermezzo though. No, actually there isn't. Ah. Hey, Beilouf, welcome back. So did you rid yourself of all of these blunders? Did you cleanse these blunders? So takes, takes. Yeah, there isn't this because of this. But he doesn't even take on d6. Okay. Okay. Ah, this is starting to get annoying for black. See, this is what I was talking about. This is a bit worse for black due to this, these bad pawns. Channeling my inner Count Dracula there. Okay. So I guess this is the last 3 plus 1 game. Let me save as much. So that they both are aware. Just clarifying that it's after this game finishes. Actually, I should post these messages when it's uh, the winning side's turn, maybe. It shouldn't matter, <laughs> but you know, maybe it's annoying when like the losing side gets a message. Anyway, like on their time. Anyway, I, uh, I. I overthink a lot of things, and this is knight f3. Okay, I kind of feel guilty for that. Did I uh, distract Eli there? Okay, I mean, if they're starting three plus zero, maybe they didn't read my message. Okay, I guess Eli is reading it now. All right, all right, Beluf. Bye, bye. Take care. I thought you did. Yeah, that would have been a quick one. <laughs> ah, whoops! I didn't start the match clock. Whoopsie, 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 whoopsie. All right. Yeah, already quite a solid position for White Bishop pair and. A very powerful pawn center. Not looking all that swell for black. It's still a solid King's Indian like position though. So it shouldn't be too bad. And the knights have maneuvering options. Maybe to b6. Not now of course. But in the future. And maybe to e5. And a6 b5 should be achievable I guess. Though not so easy with the bishop being on e2 and the knight being on b5 but maybe as a pawn sacrifice even so this isn't all too bad for black but definitely not great so let's 
it's out of the way. And rook e1, I guess. Okay, he's baby stepping the classic a3 b4 idea. Goes for it now. And yeah, we're going to see Adib's insane bullet skills now. Maybe e5. And take on g6. Okay, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. Bishop g4 attacking the weak e6 pawn. Very natural, but allowing knight f6. <laughs> not so accurate, I guess. The b7 knight is being x-rayed by the bishop, so watch out for that. But nothing much now. Alright, takes, takes. <laughs> I told you guys. <laughs> I told you guys. Yeah. Have to watch out. It was in the position. When you see these kinds of tactical ideas, like it seems sometimes that they don't at all work but you know just one wrong misstep one wrong piece uh, well piece placement and yeah you see what happens all right a deep blundering a lot of pawns here though knight f4 though okay or this going for g6 Check the time control. <laughs> yeah, good, good point. Good point, Dr. 1000. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yesterday it was so funny. Okay, these are two, two pieces. Come on, that's too much. I would resign as, uh, as Eddie here. Just get try to get more games in. To at least improve the score. Yeah. yeah, it's not one plus zero. Yeah, yeah. I actually I did check because you scared me there, Doctor One Thousand IQ. <laughs> ah, this line. There's some crazy King F Eight, King F Seven in this line. King F Eight after Queen H Five. Queen h4, yeah, this line, there's theory here. I know this line as black. Queen e4 now. Yeah, I've seen this line before. Dr. 1000 IQ, do you know this line? Yeah, no one expected such a score. Um, Raphael is tired, Eli is tired, he told me that, but... I mean, that's insane. Adib is in top form. You should have seen the games. He was like, every single move he was playing was on point. Maybe he rushed a bit here. Okay. Yeah, just game over. I play some e5, e4 against b3. Same here, actually, Dr. 1000 IQ. But this line became popular. I don't know about popular, but like I've seen it somewhere. From some famous someone. <laughs> that's a lot of... Uh, that's a, the, Those are quite some good hints, right? I've seen it somewhere from a famous someone, yeah. Yeah, I play the same, e5, e4 against b3. It's a very good line, but this line is good as well. I feel like the, like this line can get you very quick wins, as we saw by Adib. Adib knows so many lines, it's crazy. Like, Adib claims he's not good in <laughs> the opening phase of the game, but that's because he plays too many openings. <laughs> like, he knows all openings. <laughs> Seriously. He should have played c5 there, as a, and here was his last chance to play c5. I would have played that as a pawn sacrifice rather than suffering in this position. Okay, to each his own. Not strictly necessary, of course. And it is dropping a pawn, so not an easy decision. But controlling the c4 square is nice. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah. So what should white play here? Maybe some f3, I guess. 
Because bishop h3 is rather annoying. He might be considering a4 anyway. But a4, yeah, a4. There is bishop g4. Yeah, this bishop on d3 is such a liability. Like, it's terrible, but at the same time, you don't want to drop it for nothing. Now, yeah, just, yeah, bishop e3 I was going to mention. Yeah, yo, knight takes b3. Okay, or this first. Yeah, this is game over. Now bishop g2 or what? Or queen f7 or rook f8? What do you play? Rook f8. Rook a f8 that is. For mana... <laughs> <laughs> is queen g4 available queen g4 might have been available guys ah that's beautiful i just want to show it i rarely spot good tactics queen g4 the point is if takes check and you go here you go here there's mate ah uh, anyway okay you don't see the i'm sorry guys <laughs> You didn't see the end of the game. Whatever. Ellie won somehow. So Dr. 1000, like you was saying, I think the line you're talking about is a video, is in a video on YouTube by a GM. I remember looking at that video for a quick preparation before a match, but I forgot who's the GM or if he's a GM in the first place. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Eli getting almost lefonged, like what was that? Just dropping, oof. Oh god. What was that? Like, they, they exchange punches there and then there's this punch. Which is a KO, to be honest. Reminded me of this team for some tactical sharp eye. <laughs> that queen g4. <laughs> Are you talking when I tried to solve puzzles that one time? <laughs> that went very well. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I think it might have been on a YouTube video that line against b3. Might have been there. That past game went by so quickly, <laughs> like we barely got to see the b3 knight. And now Adib is trying to play the, this, and he's actually played this way back in the, like two years ago. I've covered a game of his where he played this b3 stuff. <laughs> yes, you got almost all of the puzzles wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that video is still on YouTube, so if you guys want to check out. Some random player like me getting every single puzzle wrong. <laughs> Queen g4 now as well. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just getting stuck on this Queen g4 idea in all of the games. Maybe I'll play one e4 to Queen g4, right? Will work well against the Scandi. If it were anti chess, actually. Queen h5! Wow! Queen h5! Damn, so beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Idea after bishop takes f6 is queen h5 at some point and rook g3 mate. I've seen it many times with these variations. Didn't Dubov play. Th no, Nihal played this against Dubov? No. Dubov played this against Nihal in the World Rapid, right? I bet you know the game I'm talking about, Akram. I remember Nihal losing in, in the World Champion. Yeah, 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 you mentioned it as well. Yeah, I mean, very, very typical sacrificial idea, yes. Alright. A man of chess culture, Dr. 1000 IQ. Sophie Sticky. 
Dr. 1000 IQ, since we have you in the chat and since this match isn't going to last much longer and the, uh, the conclusion, uh, the, <laughs> the result is a foregone conclusion. Um, how are you going to prepare for your match against Mr. Joe? If you do beat Samer, that is, of course. Actually, how are you going to prepare for your match against Samer? Actually, Samer has some uh, chances to beat you. Statistically, of course. So do tell us. Okay, queen, queen b5. Like, c4 almost traps the queen, but there's queen takes b4 there. And c4 now, there's queen a4. So the queen is kind of hanging by a thread here. Black's queen. I guess you play e6 here and not care. Or try to not care. Yeah, e6. You always have rook takes d1 and... Uh, Queen takes before if c4 ever does occur as well. He goes queen a4. Yeah! <laughs> what? No! Eddie, Eddie is just out of it. Eddie is just out of it. Just tactics, I believe. Maybe review some variations. Okay, doctor. <laughs> I mean, that's very reasonable, trap. Can't get much better than that. Like you're not, you weren't going to say that you were going to go on some rocky mountain and start boxing shadows and running around and fighting tribal people and fighting a lion and I should shut up. <laughs> okay. King G2. Defending all these things, and now knight f3 is coming. The queen on h4 looks menacing, but it's a wayward queen, perhaps. Queen e7 preempting knight f3, but knight f3 anyway developing, and now the knight gets access to c5, but you're dropping g6. And white's position is becoming quite significant because knight f5 is coming. Maybe queen f7 needed to be played there now. Now queen f7 is the only move to prevent checkmate on g7 and not lose the queen. And after knight takes h6, that's game over. I have a very good score against Joe in wars, so hopefully this one isn't any different. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Dr. 1000 like you. But it's been a while also. He's improved quite a lot. But so have you, so... Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. It'll be a very exciting, very tight match. Okay, I guess Eli resigned the match. We, yeah, we can technically go on for one game. Okay, he's resigned the match. All right. All right, so that was it for this stream, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all the chatters for being with us. And yeah, what a what a tremendous score by Adib. He wins 15 and a half, two and a half against someone who's reached 24-15 in blitz, 24-15 in bullet. Insane. Uh, I have no words. I have no words. His next round opponent, Adib's next round opponent will be game over, bro. So already a very, very strong matchup. Uh, actually, no, it won't be game over, bro. Game over, bro, still has to face against face off against Jawad, who might even beat game over, bro. So the matches are getting very exciting now, very very exciting. And yeah, we'll have to see who will be able to take down this absolute maverick of him. Well, he's not even a man; he's a teenager <laughs> who's uh, who just, uh, I mean, who just played such a brilliant performance. All right, guys. With that, thank you for watching. Take care and goodbye.